Hi folks, Stylepoint here. Today I'm going to be implementing the linear regression model. I'm going to be implementing it from scratch in Python using only NumPy. So let's get this done. Uh, the testing code is ready. So once we're done uh, implementing the model, we're going to be able to test it. So let's imp import uh, NumPy as well as the uh, data class from the uh, data class's built, built in Python module. Let's declare the uh, class, call it linear regression, decorate it with data class, and think about its API. Well, linear regression, of course, the supervised learning model, so the, uh, actually the API for it is quite straightforward. We need features and labels. Now we're going to be doing proper gradient descent uh, with linear regression. Some people might be scared, but I'm going to try to convince you that uh, it's not at all scary. And it, it just requires the knowledge that we all have. Learning rate, uh, we need epochs, and we need some logging. So epochs, of course, that's the number of uh, times we iterate over the entire data set. And logging is uh, for basically logging the, the loss function, the values of the loss function. OK. Other than that, we're going to be uh, we're, we're going to need the, the fit method for fitting the uh, the uh, linear regression model. So it's a, it's the uh, linear regression model, and we're going to be able uh, um, to also predict on the uh, some features that are going to be provided. These are like test testing features or validation features. If we do validation, um, so that but just performs inference using the given features. And that is basically the entire API for the uh, linear regression model. Now, before I'm going to implement fit and predict, I'm going to talk about the uh, linear function. So we probably all learned about linear function in elementary or middle school. This is how it looks. In machine learning, in deep learning, in modern artificial intelligence, that's not the way we code it up or the way we represent it. We represent it as W, X plus B because it's weights times features plus bias. And in fact, I actually prefer a different way to write it. It's XW plus B. Some researchers and engineers, they write it this way. I prefer writing it this way because in the actual implementation, it's actually features times the weights plus bias. With the uh, scalar values, if we have just real numbers, then uh, the, the multiplication operation is commutative, meaning that M times X would be the same as X times M. It would be make no difference. But with the uh, 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 higher order tensors, or with like multi-dimensional arrays or uh, matrices, the uh, the multiplication, the dot operation, the dot product, it's not a commutative operation. So uh, x times w and w times x are completely different operations. So this is the way basically it's implemented in neural networks. So that's why I prefer coding it up this way or representing the equation that way. Now, the way I'm going to write uh, um, implement the rest of the uh, linear regression, basically. The way I'm going to write the code is I'm going to first write two lines of the fit method, and then I'm going to write, then I'm going to basically get done with a predict, and then I'm going to finish the fit method. Okay, so let's do this. First, we're going to go ahead and get number of samples and number of features. These are needed to initialize, basically, uh, well, at least the uh, number of features are needed uh, uh, for the, uh, or is needed for the, uh, weights initialization and we can initialize it using some distributions but in this case uh, we're going to keep it simple make everything zero and as promised now I'm going to finish the predict method now the way we're going to write this is basically we're going to look at this line equation x w plus b let's basically follow it x what is x that's features that we have right here times that's dot operation in numpy W, that's self.weights, plus, because that's the plus right there, B, B is self.bias. Done. We're done with predict. Okay, we're done. Now, we're going to implement the fit method. Once we implement fit, and it's actually not very complicated, uh, we're done with linear regression. Okay, first, we're going to iterate over the, the uh, uh, well, the epochs number of times. We're going to iterate epochs number of times. And we're going to perform optimization because we're doing gradient descent. Now, we're not doing like uh, a batch gradient descent or mini batch gradient descent, but we're still doing gradient descent. We need optimization. And mini batch gradient descent is not very different from this. Uh, maybe I'm going to make a separate video about it. But right now, let's, uh, uh, let's think about how we do gradient descent. In the linear regression, I'm going to use the mean squared error loss. There are other loss functions we could have used or designed on our own, but mean squared error loss is fine. And this is basically actual 
minus predicted squared over number of samples. So actual, we call it y, predicted as f of x, right, uh, squared over num samples. Okay, so over num samples we're going to disregard for now uh, uh, because we just divide by num samples anyway. It's like a scalar value, 1 over num samples, right? So uh, we're going to find derivative of this with respect to weights and with respect to weights, and we also need one with respect to bias. How do we do that? Well, the chain rule. That's all we need to know, really. As 2 times, uh, basically, uh, uh, y minus f of x times y minus f of x derivative. Again, super simple. And that basically expands to 2 times y minus f of x uh, times y minus uh, uh, xw minus b. And if we do it with respect to weights, we get uh, minus 2x times y minus fx times nothing. Because uh, if this is uh, uh, the way it's going to expand, sorry, this derivative right there, the way it's going to expand is uh, y is fixed value, that's 0. b is fixed value, that's 0. Um, and uh, it's with respect to weights, so minus x is going to be left. Oops. And so we're going to get uh, uh, minus 2x times y minus fx. Super simple. We're not scared. It's just a chain rule. And with respect to bias, we just need to look at this again. Um, this is going to be 0. That is going to be, the entire thing is going to be 0. But that's going to be minus 1 because b is like a variable, right? So in this case, it's going to be that. Now, notice that it's, uh, for the weights, it's minus 2x times y minus fx. And in, in case of uh, um, bias, it's y minus fx times minus 2. What is this? Well, that's like residuals, right? That's literally the uh, definition of residuals. So we call it residuals. And that's self.labels, which is y minus self.predict on self.features, right? So labels, which is like y minus predict f of x on features, self-features from here. Okay, the next is d weights. Again, we read off of this. It's minus 2 um, times residuals, minus 2x times residuals. Well, we could do it like this, residuals dot self.features. Uh, we could have also done self.features dot residuals dot tra transpose, but it's so wor it works out this way as well, so it's kind of nice uh, that it does. Uh, this is like the pyrite complaining about typing, uh, uh, the types basically, uh, so we can ignore that. Um, and we also need to divide by num samples. I actually forgot the division here. Uh, to make it more efficient, we can divide it right here. Okay, and for dbias, it's the same except for we just don't multiply by anything. It's just the sum, minus two times the sum of those. And then we perform, you know, the gradient, uh, gradient descent, self dot. Uh, weights minus equals self dot learning grade times the weights. That's it. We go uh, toward the direction of the uh, negative gradient, right, uh, with the learning grade. And if self dot logging is enabled, maybe we're going to print uh, the uh, uh, MSC loss. We could import like the logging module. That would be more, you know, a proper way to implement it. But we can maybe do like epoch here, and then report mean squared error loss and maybe like three decimals and epoch we can give it right here so as i promised nothing difficult right the only part may be these derivatives but i mean there is nothing really fundamentally difficult about these derivatives we just the ba the only difficult part maybe even if it's difficult it's just the uh, uh, uh the chain rule but again, we know how chain rule works, and that's fine. Um, and we uh, stored residuals because we're using it in two places so that it's more efficient. And then we have self-weight, self-bias uh, uh, updated, and we log stuff if logging is enabled. That's it. We're done with the, uh, the uh, linear regression model. We have the testing code. The testing code actually has to do with the uh, 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 fx equals 2x function. So it's just a very simple function that takes one number, multiplies it by two. Um, and I have some generated features and labels, some generated test features and test labels. I fit the model, and I make some plots. Okay, so let's 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 look at the plots. Okay, okay, 
Okay. So we have visualization for fx equals 2x. This is not the model output. This is just the visualization, how, uh, visualization how fx equals 2x looks like. And that's how it looks. You know, for 200, we would get like 400. This is the scatter plot for the uh, testing data, right? So we can take a look at that right here. So test features, test labels. And we basically want to generate a line. We basically want to generate predictions and fit a line so that these lines go over these points. And then the third line right here, the rightmost one, is visualization for approximated fx equals 2x, test features, and predictions. And predictions we got from the uh, linear regression model. And there we have it. The line actually is almost like a perfect, maybe it's perfect line. It actually goes through the, all the points. Of course, it's a simple function, but it, it basically shows us how the uh, linear regression works. Now, uh, let's also test some other features, right? Let's test our logging feature. Uh, let's make it true. Okay. Uh, by the way, you know, accuracy, precision, recall, and F-score, they're all one. So I guess the perfect model, but of course the function was very easy or very simple, um, very easy to approximate. Um, MSC loss, okay, we see it's 8,200 or 82,834, and then it goes down, and it's always zero. I don't like that zero. Maybe we can uh, increase the precision, like more digits after zero, so maybe like 15 would, would work or 16 would work. Uh, let's see. And I don't want the plot, though. Uh, yeah, so we see, that, we see that diagonal kind of like a pattern where we see like these more, more of these like zeros. And that's like a good sign and loss decrease is actually, I think around 25th epoch, it actually uh, converges. So actually, this logging maybe actually uh, uh, um, gave us some info. Maybe I change it to 25. Still going to still gonna give us same results? Yeah, it does. Awesome. So, and <laughs> we get, uh, you know, everything is 100%. Everything is one. So that's basically the uh, linear regression implementation from scratch using only NumPy. Um, it is, let me see how many lines of code it is. It is, I think, 25 lines of idiomatic Python. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was uh, somewhat clear. And if there are any issues or any questions with uh, the code itself uh, um, or about the code, uh, please feel free to comment in the uh, comment section below. If, there, uh, if you have any suggestions, uh, um, also, please make those suggestions. I'm going to uh, take them into account for the future videos. So once again, thanks a lot, and I'm going to see you next time.